Hi everyone, in this video we're going to analyze the performance of a turbo exhaust manifold using CFD simulations. Of course, if you want to boost the power of your Honda Civic, you can shop for an aftermarket part, uh, like the Sidewinder exhaust uh, system that we saw they would use and install in this video. Uh, really cool stuff. But you can also take it to the next level and design your own exhaust manifold in CAD software. And then use simulations to optimize it. So in this video, we're going to be using this um, exhaust manifold model that I found online. It's quite old, 2017, but it's still very valid. And what we're going to do is run a steady state incompressible simulation. Uh, of course, in reality, the pulses, would, the pulses would come in at different timings and the flow would be compressible. But running that through simulations is possible, but it will set you back like a factor 10 in terms of time and money to do so. Uh, while you can get 85-80% of the learnings um, by just applying a pressure delta, delta between these inlets of the system and the outlets. So I'm just going to apply a 35,000 pascals pressure value at the inlets, which are actually the outlets of your engine, uh, and this is relative pressure. So that means this is relative to the atmospheric pressure. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to set the outlet to a zero pressure, whether there's a, um, a, another system or turbo after this or not, um, that is actually fine. And then we're going to run a low resolution simulation, which, take, which takes around 30 to 60 minutes to finish. And once it's finished, this is what you would see. So this is the pressure distribution. So as you can see, we have the high pressure that we put as a boundary condition at the inlet, and we have a low pressure at the outlet and pressure values in between uh, as you move through the different runners. You can see there's pressure variations um, at the outside, at the um, outer side of the bend, you get a high pressure because the flow hits that wall and the inside you get a low pressure and so on. What we're mainly interested in is to look at whether um, these pipes will deliver kind of similar values in terms of pressure resistance, which would in turn then lead to equal flow distribution values. So obviously, um, in this system, the, the lengths are not equal. Uh, so this runner has the highest length, and that would imply that this one has the highest pressure resistance um, because it has more wall surface uh, or surface area, and thus more skin friction, sorry, and thus more resistance in total. But that's not the only thing that determines the resistance of a runner. So if you look at this one, for example, you'll see that we have this blue area here on the inside. So what is happening with this runner is that it has the most aggressive radius, so the smallest radius um, of the entire system, which means that the air comes out with a certain velocity and a certain uh, impulse or momentum, and it's hard for the air to actually follow this bend. So it'll rather just shoot too far and hit the end of this bend and actually overshoot this radius and only land further downstream. Which means that within this area, you have like a recirculation zone uh, and a zone where the airflow actually uh, even has cross flows in there. So there's air flowing backwards, uh, sideways, and so on. Um, so that creates extra pressure resistance because this actually uh, is separated airflow. Um, we see that this is also happening in different areas, for example here uh, where all of the runners come together and meet just before entering the outlet of this system. You can see that there's a bit of uh, flow separation here as well. Uh, on the inside of the bends, um, you can see that this swirl here actually propagates the rest of the pipe but it's less pronounced on, for example, the second runner. So the second runner also has a small bit of flow separation here, but actually not much. And most of the flow lines uh, stay nicely attached to the wall um, all the way to the end of the system. And this actually leads us to analyze the flow rate per opening. So at the outlet, so remember that we set up the simulation with a boundary condition where we have a pressure delta, so a high pressure at the inlets and a, high, a low pressure at the outlets, which is a driving force for the simulation and automatically the software will determine how much flow rate you actually get given this pressure delta. Now in this, case, in this case that means you have a flow rate of a little over 515 liters per second, which is quite a lot of course. Um, and then if we compare that to the flow rate across the different uh, inlets or the outlets of your engine, you can see that there is a variation. So this one has 127 liters per second, this one has 132, this one has 130, and this one has 126. Now that's quite interesting because if we look at this one, uh, 
This is the flow rate delta um, compared to the average flow rate. So imagine your average is 100, then this one would have like 98 flow rate, this one with 100 would have 101.36 and so on. So you can see that the lowest flow rate is um, for the longest pipe. So here we can see that all of the friction on the wall is creating so much pressure resistance that this one gets the lowest flow rate. Now, interestingly, it's not this one or this one, it's the first one, which actually has the second uh, lowest flow rate. So the one closest to the actual exhaust, which is interesting because it would have the shortest length or um, one of the shortest lengths in terms of runner length. But still, because of this flow separation that we saw, this one features the highest pressure drop uh, out of these three, uh, these three runners. So really important or really nice indicator uh, to make sure that you optimize the radius of your bends and don't overdo it. Now the second, uh, the third lowest flow rate is then the third pipe here, um, which has a, a, a reasonable length, uh, but has much larger radius or radii. And then the highest flow rate is for the second one here, um, which has um, almost one of the shortest lengths, um, but has a less aggressive radius um, in the bends and thus has the lowest um, uh, pressure drop or pressure resistance in total and thus gets the highest flow rate. So that was it for our video on how you can analyze the performance of a manifold using CFD simulations. By the way, you can check the simulation results yourselves. Uh, just follow the link in the description and then let us know what you think. Or if you've been working on a similar project, have you designed your own manifold? Have you had problems with your manifold? Just drop your experiences in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.